All right, welcome back to another part 107 practice test video. In this video, we're gonna be going over a few sectional chart problems. So let's go ahead and jump in. So this first one says, you have been contracted to inspect towers located approximately four nautical miles southwest of the Sioux Gateway Airport operating an unmanned aircraft. What is the maximum altitude above ground level AGL that you're authorized to operate over the top of the towers? Um, so some important things to highlight here is we're asked for above ground level or AGL. You'll notice all three answers are in AGL, so you don't really need to worry about MSL or AGL. We're also told what airport we're looking for, the SUX airport, and we're also told that there's towers and they're four nautical miles southwest. So we've highlighted all the important information in our problem. Let's go ahead and take a look at figure 78. Um, you'll notice our airport is right here, okay? I knew that because it's being labeled here. It's also uh, the only airport on this figure. So we want to figure out the towers four nautical miles southwest. So remember, north, east, south west so southwest is going to be in this direction so if i had to guess it would probably be this tower here but as always you want to make sure you're doing your calculation so all of these figures will have this little ruler at the bottom so you can go ahead and count out four nautical miles and maybe measure it with your fingers or you'll get a ruler as well when you're taking the test but let's see one two three four this is about four nautical miles so if i take that if I take this over here and I rotate it a bit, you'll see, yep, we are exactly talking about that tower here. Let me go ahead and erase this. So we're talking about this tower here, and this is the label we have for our heights. Remember that when we see one number over another like this, 1498, and then in parentheses, 402, the number above is an MSL, the number below is an AGL. This should make sense, right? Remember, MSL stands for mean sea level, so that would be the height of the tower starting from sea level, and then AGL is above ground level. So that should make sense that the MSL height is always going to be greater than or equal to the AGL height. We have these two heights. Remember that the problem asked us for AGL, so you might be tempted to say, okay, it's 402 AGL, and that's the answer, okay? But remember, you're flying an unmanned aircraft, and this is just the height of the tower. Remember that when you're flying an unmanned aircraft, you can fly 400 feet above the highest point of a structure. Let's say, for example, we have this tower, um, and you want to fly a drone out and fly it above the tower. You're allowed to do that as long as you're within 400 feet of the top part of the tower. What we need to do here is we can just add 400 feet to our tower's height in AGL to get the maximum altitude at which we can fly our unmanned aircraft. So that would be 802 feet AGL because we're accounting for this 400 feet of additional altitude that we're allowed to fly. That is our correct answer. Let's see if we have it in one of the answers. Yep, so it looks like C is the correct answer here. 400 is incorrect here. You might be tempted to choose this if you didn't know that you're allowed to fly your drone 400 feet above the tallest height of an obstruction or of a tower. B is also incorrect. You might think this is the right answer if you just took a look at the altitude of the tower and you said, okay, well, that makes sense that the highest you can fly your drone would be at that 402 feet AGL, but that is not the correct answer. Remember, you want to add 400 feet. They'll try to trip you up with these questions, but make sure you see through their tricks and you get the right answer, which is 802 feet AGL. Let's go ahead and move on to the next problem. So next problem says the floor of class B airspace overlying Hicks Airport, uh, north northwest of this field is, and then we have three options. This figure that they give you is massive. So remember, we want to be taking a look at this area four. Uh, so let's go ahead and zoom in to that. So area four, it looks like Hicks Airport is this here. We're trying to figure out the floor of the class B airspace. Remember class B stands for big, big blue airspaces. These are reserved for very, very popular airports like JFK, for example. In this example, we're flying over it looks like the Dallas Fort Worth International Airport. So I remember that these class B airspaces, they look like an upside down wedding cake where they have these concentric circles of airspace where depending on where you are within the airspace, you have different floors. So for example, in this inner circle, the floor would be the surface. Here, 
the floor is slightly higher, so on and so forth. The whole point behind this question is seeing if you can understand what the bounds of the Class B airspace that an airport is. And one thing I should point out here is to be really careful with these airspaces because you'll notice that within this Class B airspace, you've got these Class D airspaces as well. So if we take a look at our Hicks Airport, it doesn't really look like it's inside any D airspace or any C airspace. It looks like the B airspace, predominantly what you'll hit inside of that. What I do with these problems is I try to highlight the surrounding airspace. So if I were to start here, you'll see it'll kind of sort of start to make sense. So here's the perimeter and then I keep going, I keep going, keep going. And then it looks something like this, and then it looks like that, and then like this, and then we go like this. And now we have the surrounding airspace around this airport. So why did I do that? The reason why is because within each of these, you'll notice that the floor and ceiling of the section of that airspace is pointed out here. So this intersection, you'll see the floor is surface level. From the surface to you add two zeros to the surface to 11,000 feet. That's how far this part of the Class B airspace is. Then for like this section here, the floor is 3,000 feet and the ceiling is 11,000 feet, so on and so forth. So we're trying to see if we can find one of those labels for this section that I've highlighted. You kind of just like scan through and you see if you run into one of those. Looks like here, it's a little hard to read, but you'll see the ceiling is 11,000, that's the number up top, and then the floor is 4,000. And if you keep going, you'll see this number sometimes repeated. It's also here. They put this number pretty frequently throughout the diagram because there is just so much going on. This means that the floor of the Class B airspace would be 4,000 feet MSL. This one is a little bit tricky. Make sure that you're first highlighting the section that the airport you're looking at is within. When I had a problem like this on my Part 107 test, they gave you some transparent paper and a marker. So what I did is I literally just overlaid that transparent paper on top of the test and I highlighted it with the marker so that I could see very, very clearly the boundaries of this airspace. Why are A and B incorrect? A is not correct because this 4,000 floor is not the surface. It, let's say, for example, the Hicks Airport was located inside of this subsection of the Class B airspace, then we could say that the floor is at the surface, but since it's not, we can't say that. It's not 3,200 feet MSL either. Maybe, maybe if you confuse it with this here, but this is actually the ceiling of this Class D airspace. So if they had asked us for the ceiling of this airport, then we would have said 3,200 feet MSL. The correct answer here is 4,000 feet MSL. Let's move on to the next question. Next question here we have says, a small UA is being launched two nautical miles in northeast of the town of Hertford. What is the height of the highest obstacle? So this is very similar to our first problem, uh, but it's a little bit different. Notice here we're not being asked what's the height that our unmanned aircraft could reach. It's what is the height of the obstacle? We're looking at area four. Let's zoom in. Area four is down here. Let's find that town of Hertford. Looks like here it is. Uh, and we're going two nautical miles northeast. So remember, north, east. So northeast is this way. If you're doing this on your actual test, you're going to want to take out your ruler and measure it. Two nautical miles northeast is referring to these obstacles here. So if we went ahead and we found the tallest of the obstacles, it would be this this one here so what we have for our height is 514 and 500 so remember the top number is in msl the bottom number is in agl how do i remember that i know that the msl height has to be greater than or equal to the agl height and this should make sense based on your understanding of mean sea level versus above ground level these problems are going to want to trip you up. They're going to make you try to confuse MSL and AGL. Make sure you know the top number is MSL. Right then and there, we have our answer. Let's go ahead and see if we have 514 MSL or 500 AGL as one of our answers. 
it looks like the correct answer here is 500 feet AGL. Notice that they try to trip you up with answer number B. If you couldn't remember if the top number is MSL or the bottom number was MSL, you might have selected this. You might have been like, oh, the bottom number is probably MSL, so it's 500 feet MSL. No, that's incorrect. A is also incorrect. This obstacle here, you'll notice that the height is 399 feet MSL, and that's the only height it gives you. It doesn't actually give you a height in AGL, but this obstacle is shorter than this other one that I pointed out. The reason why is because you can compare the two MSL numbers. 514 is greater than 399. So um, you might be tempted to select 399 MSL as the answer here, but that would be incorrect because there is a taller obstacle than that, and that would be that 500 feet AGL. Hopefully that helps you out with these sectional chart problems. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I'll get back to you, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.